Oslo by Streamlabs. On here you can share any document with your editor or somebody who makes thumbnails for you. If you collaborate with another YouTuber or streamer, this is an easy way to share files. And you know what? They just improved their tool by adding an editor function. So let's dive right into it. Here we go to oslo.io. I made it easy for you and left the link down below in the description. We're gonna log in and I'm gonna log in with my Google, but you can also log in with email. I really like to log in with Google because then it's easy and you can use the export function to YouTube. So I'm gonna do that. So click on the email address that's connected to your YouTube channel and then click on your YouTube channel. So as you see here in the top right, we see three. That is my YouTube channel, obviously. But there's a couple of functions. Here we have supporting assets. And we can see that there's some videos here that I've put in and we can scroll through them and see how they look like. Here we have the change webcam shape video that is here on YouTube. If you haven't seen that one, it's just up here. But as you can see, we can scroll through the video here. And if we click on it, we can even leave comments. So here we can leave a comment and we can actually do that further in the video. We can even do it here. For example, we'll say hi. And then we can say it was on 0, 0 and 21 seconds. We can even do some drawing by toggling the drawing here. And we can say like, oh, here, something here, something here. And then if we send it, you can see that these drawings are appearing at 21 seconds into the video. They're not printed to the footage or anything like that. It's just so you can work together and you can point out what the things are that you mean you know, that you're talking about. This was a function that was on also before, but now they added the editing function. If you want to make a whole new project with new assets, we click on here and we add a new product project. So let's do that. Hey, yo, we're going to call it. Hey, yo. And we're clicking. On okay. Now here in Hey, yo, we can create a new video project. Hi, <laughs> I'm so original. Okay. And now we have a whole new project and we don't see any footage. Let's go back here. We see supporting assets and if we drop something in here, it will be uploaded. We can also click on upload and it will just open our file explorer. We can upload these samples from TrueDad and then it's uploading and you will see the upload going up here. I think this is the TDAD footage for the stream and this is where he's actually doing the voice acting. <laughs> or we can just click here and add some new footage. So we're gonna add TDAD in here. So when it's done, we can get it in. Now we see that it's processing and we have to wait a little bit for the footage is uploaded and then we have it here and we just drag it in. With the media, here you see all the media but you can also sort on video, audio or images only. Okay, so now we have it in the timeline and we could export it already, but obviously we want to edit, right? First thing that's important is how do we want the edit to look at the end? Do we want it to be TikTok vertical? Do we want it to have Instagram, which is a square? Or do we want to have it like YouTube and it's just 1080p, right? We click right here on the frame next to the footage. And here we have landscape, which is YouTube, portrait, which is TikTok and YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, and then square, is Instagram normal feed and Facebook. We can also add a background color, which means that if we move this around, you will see the background color, but usually you just wanna fill it up with footage. I'm just gonna edit it in YouTube because this is how the original footage is made as well. Here we got the edits. You can have the footage be on half the speed, double the speed, or one half times the speed. You can also have the audio be less loud or louder here. And the audio can also fade in and out. So what we can do is we can click somewhere in the footage and click on S. It will cut. Ctrl Z backwards. What we can also do is click on split here, which basically does the same thing as clicking on S. So just S is cutting, Ctrl Z is going a step backwards. Basically in almost every editing program you can do S and it will cut. Ctrl Z it will go back. What we have as well is undo and redo here. So we can also do Ctrl Shift Z if you want to go forward. You can always use these buttons here if you can't remember the shortcuts. If you want to delete something we just make two cuts and we click on this middle part and delete it and then we can drag this back in and we can see it is attached to each other again. Make sure that if you want to cut them with S or with this button here that you select the footage you want to cut. So if you want to cut this one, we're selecting that one and it cuts that one. But if you select this one and you want to cut it, then it selects the bottom one. So make sure that you select the right one while cutting. We can crop them by doing this. If we want to duplicate video, right click, duplicate. We can also delete it back out of the timeline. If you want to rotate the footage, we can do that with adjust. Here we can rotate it rip, around. So for example, we can have it go like crazy like this. <laughs> if you just drag it, it will stay in proportion. If you use shift, it will go out of proportion. If you use alt, we can zoom in and out. You can also rotate this back to zero and put it back into the frame. You can zoom in, for example, on us. 
and then we can change the position here to left or right by dragging in or we can actually put in the numbers as well. Opacity, if you want it to be see-through, it's black underneath so it looks more black but if there's doubles footage it will be see-through. Contrast is the colors. Brightness is how bright is the picture. And then we can also use shift there to have like Purple bands, for example. <laughs> and saturation is more color or less color. So we can make it black and white like this or get it like super colorful with it. So these are some color corrections. We can also flip horizontal and flip vertical with these buttons. Here we also have a text tool on the left. If we click on this, we can get some text inside the footage. So we can drag it here. As you see, it opens a new track and now it's on top of the footage. So we can make it bigger. For example, we have the simple text here. We're gonna be calling it see that. So if you have the text selected, we have a lot of options here. We can make the font size bigger or smaller, but we can also drag it if you want to, that's easier. The color of it, we can change that. Content, see that, we can also double click on it and it starts typing here. If you want a different font type, you can choose whatever you want here. You can make the opacity less, which makes it a little bit see through. You can even rotate it. Uh -huh. And at fans here, we can have a background color. For example, if you want a background color to be displayed behind it, definitely don't go for this combo, but you can, <laughs> you can make it more easily readable like that. Ctrl Z will get it back. A border color might be interesting though. For example, black, and then we can put the border weight on 10. And then we have a little border around this. Again, Ctrl Z if you want to get rid of it. Back to advanced padding which makes the border go further away. So again, if we have a border of 10 here, we can add the padding or distract the padding and it will be larger box. Same with the background color, it will be a larger box. If we add a text stroke, we get this little stroke around it. I would recommend doing that with white or black so you can read it a little bit more easily. You can also get the stroke to be like thicker, thick or just like really small if you want to. We can also fade in, for example, the text. You can see it, it be starts to appear now. We can have the duration be fast and now it fades in quicker. You can also have it fade out, fade in and out. So that's how you add text. Now we know how to use the text tool. We know how to cut some footage. We know how to upload the footage. We don't have to save actually. So we know how to save because it's Automatically saving literally everything. It just saves it to the cloud. You got like 15 gigabytes of storage, so you don't have to worry about that at all. It will save for everybody that's working on the project. So we have some transitions here. We need to make sure that this is against each other. We see this plus here. We can add the transition via here, or we can drag one in via the transitions here. So let's click on the plus and add a bounce in here. You can see that this footage bounces out now. Updated to circle crop, for example. And now it does this. We can add any of these transitions you want. If you don't add a transition, it will be a normal cut. So that will be the standard cut. Like this. Cut, 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 cut. That's a normal cut. Then here we also have a filter option. We can actually add a black and white filter. This is in color and this is black and white. Click on the footage and click on something else. We got emeralds, moody, dull. We can add any of these and Ctrl Z we can get rid of them again. You can also just click on none if you want to do it instantly. Sounds. These are all kinds of sound effects and we can actually drag them in by clicking on the plus and we can drag them under here. We can drag them anywhere we want on the timeline. If you want to search in the sound effects, go click on all and here we can search for intros, for example, and these are all intro kind of sounds. If you want to know how we can do some things, down here on the bottom it says tutorials and there are quite some tutorials here that can help you with the editing software if you can't figure it out. What we can also do is we can leave comments. If you go to the comments section and we click somewhere, we can leave a comment. More zoom here. And if we click enter and we go somewhere else, go back to the comments, we can see this one is right here. It's placed right here. We need more zoom here. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going here and to adjust and we're gonna zoom. Now we have that more zoom here. That is resolved. So we click on resolve, it is resolved. So we don't have to work on that again. We can leave more comments anywhere we want. We can also export the project by clicking here on export. We can call it the title we wanna have, the FPS here, and we can immediately publish it to YouTube. If we export right now, 
it's gonna render on their own servers. Right now it's two minutes for it to render. You can just close the browser because it will be rendering on their servers. It will not take any of your own computer power. They will send a notification when it's ready. If you're seeing uploading directly to YouTube, don't be afraid, it doesn't upload immediately. It goes on private, so you can still set your titles, set your descriptions, set your text and stuff like that, and then release it. So don't worry about that, that it instantly releases. It will be saved directly into your videos on YouTube. If we go to our YouTube channel and then we're going to content here, you see a couple of previews of videos that are gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> and here we see our video of hi and as you see it is private and we can set our title we can set our description we can set our thumbnail playlist and stuff like that right here so we're back here in the main project with hi this one is rendering obviously but we want to add some editors what we do is here click on a plus and add a member we can invite somebody here by putting their email address here and then click on invite and they will get an invitation and we can see this is the footage that we made. So we can click on here and we can actually download it. It's already gone to YouTube. We can click on publish to YouTube. We can give it a says ready to publish in progress or needs review, deleted. We can grant permissions so we can invite more people to work on this project, for example. We can also share this document and then we can allow people to download it or not. So if you want to send it to somebody that you want to review it, but don't want to have the footage, make sure that the allow downloads is not on and then they can actually leave comments with the things they think need to be changed, but they can't really download the footage. If you run into any problems with the video editing, you can always click here and you can ask a question to their support team. So a big plus of Oslo is that you can edit on something while somebody else is also editing on it. Because you share all the footage via the internet on their cloud. You also don't have to wait on the render times because they render it on their server and you don't have to wait with your computer and you can do whatever you want, like gaming, for example, while it's rendering. I think the best feature of it all is that you can leave comments. So if you're working on it with multiple people, you can give each other feedback and it will be exactly on the timeline where the feedback is given. So it's really easy to work with the feedback. Thank you so much, Oslo by Streamlabs for sponsoring this video and making this awesome tool to make it easier for us content creators to create content. Sometimes it's really hard to be a content creator, especially to find motivation. So I do have a video all about how you can get motivated to create more content right here. So let's jump into that video and let's get you motivated.